think I wanted to look at some of the roots of our current culture and really focus on this period, which is called Generation X. I'm interested in that period. I kind of was a teenager during that period. And one of my arguments is that the Generation X is really um, when for the first time the general culture and the economy was really catering to teenagers and like young adults. Basically, people are shaped by entertainment and that entertainment is about um, giving pleasure to individuals and that pleasure is often a form of escape and it can become addictive. And so what you see in Gen X is you see the start of this. So in the first chapter, I talk about this situation where a teacher, I think it's like 1980, he's in a classroom and a student brings a portable TV and the teacher's freaked out. And I think it's so funny now, everyone brings their laptops and their iPhones and people in large lecture classes are surfing the web. But there you see this first encroachment of what I'm calling like the entertainment subject. You have this generational divide, but you have this idea that the teachers come from this culture where it's really focused on like books and reading, not on entertainment. And so there's many different generations that are kind of like in conflict with each other, partially based on like what media is the central media for their culture. Nirvana is interesting because they had this kind of ambivalent role. On one hand, they kind of cater to this, to the MTV culture, the consumer culture, but then they also rebel against it, which makes it a little bit ironic. In the one hand, they you know want to be famous, they want to be successful. On the other hand, they hate fame, they hate success, and they want fans, but then they mock their fans. Like so, their big line, you know, acting stupid and contagious. Here we are now, entertain us. You know, like you have this notion of fame is still like a slightly rare commodity in, you know, with Nirvana, but with the internet, fame kind of becomes like uh, democratized in the sense like everyone has a immediate access to it, but on a, maybe for a short time. And so the technology allows everyone to kind of like think of themselves as like a star of their own universe. But the media kind of like, you can turn people on and off, you can control what you watch and see, it gives you a tremendous sense of power and I think that kind of feeds a certain type of entitlement. Like I should be able to get whatever I want whenever I want it. In the modern period, like we start with the enlightenment, like there's this idea of the Protestant work ethic, like you're supposed to delay gratification, right? Amazon's like the opposite of delaying gratification. You get everything instantly delivered right to you. Um, they do surveys of incoming students every year. And it used to be like the top thing that students wanted to get out of college was to learn more about themselves and the world around them. And that's moved to like fifth or sixth, right? Now people go to college, they say the first thing is to get a good job. It's not just about individuals, it's, it's about like this, these individual desires that shape culture, but also culture shapes the individual desires. So it's kind of like a mirror and it goes back and forth. Yeah, there's a lot of positive stuff about the ability to access all this information and, and knowledge is potentially you know, incredible and it does benefit a lot of people and it can open up access to people who wouldn't normally traditionally get education. And so it has a lot of positive benefits, but also has these negative effects. Like people talk about oh, the biggest threat to our future is like climate change or pandemics, nuclear weapons or global poverty. And I think like, we're not gonna deal with any of those issues if we have a way so easy, such an easy way to escape from reality. If we can just choose what kind of world we wanna live in, through technology and just escape from reality and issues and problems and conflicts and other people. I think that's the biggest risk that we face as a society.